Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name's Claire Williams and I work for Beta. Um, and I'd like to welcome you to today's live featuring Nikki Baxter. Um, we have something different for you all today. Um, for those of you watching both live and after the fact, um, you'll be seeing a fantastic plating demo. Every year, Beta, so British Equestrian Trade Association, publishes a calendar. We go out to all of you around the country in about June and ask you to send your best photos in to go in to be featured in our calendar. Um, last year we had over 250 entries which was brilliant and our April star was this beautiful picture of Seren plaited up in a reverse scallop plaits by Nikki Baxter from Baxter Equine Services. So I'm really delighted to be able to welcome um, Nikki today. Hi, Nikki. Hi. Um, yeah. Hi. This is Seren, the star yeah. of the photo. Uh -huh. This is the, the horse and flesh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just going to give you the screen. And we're joined by the lucky lady who owns this beautiful horse. Um, Linda Barnes is our camera woman for the day behind the camera. Um, Nikki or Linda, can you tell us a bit about Seren first before we get started? So Seren's a six-year-old um, British warm blood by Franklin Sugar. Uh, she's competing at novice elementary level dressage and uh, is my model for most of my platinum photos. Um, she's Beautiful and very well behaved, loves getting attention, so she's perfect to faff about on. Um, and I think that's about her. Uh, Brilliant. Owned by, owned by Linda, and I steal her things. <laughs> perfect model. She must be used to this. So oh. you're going to show us, you've started already, I see. You're going to show us how you do these amazing plaits. What what type of mane is the ideal mane? Has Sarah got the perfect mane for something like this? Uh, so for her mane, like I like to make it quite intricate, um, and her mane isn't overly thick, so it's ideal for it. Like I'd say, it's it's literally the perfect plaiting thickness, and we keep it slightly on the longer side because I like to do more creative plaits. So it's about two hands wide, which is about eight inches, um, and I don't actually pull it. I just chop the bottoms and keep it a, a nice uniform length. Um, so you can do this with uh, thicker manes as well, but I'd probably make the plait slightly wider rather than mm -hmm. thinner. Um, and it works on very long manes as well. I've done these plaits on like a Highland Pony with a mane down to the shoulders before. Um, I've got like new videos online so you can see all the kind of demos. Um, but yeah, um, get started whenever you're ready. Yeah, yeah crack on. Cool. So, uh, to start, I prefer having a mane that's not too clean because it ends up getting slippy. So her mane was washed probably about a week ago. Um, so it's got a tiny bit of grease in it. Um, having a damp mane makes it easier as well. Um, so you can use a spray bottle or a wee sponge. So I'll dampen it down. That's a good sponge to use. I'd never have thought of using one from the kitchen. Oh, we're, we're cheap. We just grab whatever works. <laughs> That's brilliant. I'll have to remember yeah. that. Um, and then I use uh, these combs. Um, it's got the finer point on the end. So it's really good for getting a nice, neat part rather than the, the horsey ones that you get out of tack shops. Um, so I'm going to section off. I'll make two or three little sections so I can show you the next little bit that I'm doing. Is that an actual hairdressing comb then you're using? Yes, it is. It's a human one. Um, yep. I think the human stuff tends to be better quality than the horsey stuff. Um, not all of it, but the likes of scissors. I use like proper hairdressing scissors rather than the horse ones, uh, the human hairdressing comb. Um, some hairsprays work better as well. Um, so I'm just going to make little sections. So we're roughly... Oh, Linda's Hold just on, adjusting on chair. two seconds. <laughs> so um, I, I tend to use my fingers and stuff as a guide. So but all my plaits are roughly just to the bottom or top of my thumb knuckle. So I'm going to make them about the same width all the way down. So you can use your little comb to get that nice neat part. And then I'm just going to stick a wee band. Oh, 
my bands are breaking. Just stick a band around it so I can keep it separate and neat. And do you separate them all out beforehand? Yeah, I can do that because I'm quite, uh, I, I like to make sure it's all perfect. So I don't tend to plait as I go. Um, I'll separate it all and uh, make sure they're all a uniform width. Are there any mains you have real problems with plaiting up? Uh, very short, very thick manes. If your horse has a thicker mane, it's actually easier to keep it on the longer side because you will find it easier to plait it. Um, if your horse has a double crest, as in it's got mane lying over both sides, you could actually just plait on both sides of the neck rather than ripping the hair out of it, which I, I don't think is particularly enjoyable for most horses. No, what what do you do? One of one of mine has half the top half goes one way and the bottom half goes the other. Um, so I think a lot of people try and train the manes over by plaiting them, but I honestly think you're fighting a losing battle. So I just leave it be until I need to plait it, and then I'll dampen it down and pull it to where I need it to be. Um, yeah, yeah. I think everyone wants their horses to look perfectly smart all the time, but it's like. They've got cows licks and stuff like humans, and sometimes hair just doesn't cooperate. So, um, <laughs> so I've got our main dampened. Um, just using a taming wax. It's a hairy pony one I use. Um, so I like this because it gives me a little bit more grip on the hair, um, and it helps smooth the hair out. So once I've added the wax, I get my comb again, and I'm just gonna run it through what it does is spread the wax through the hair more evenly and it also makes the hair kind of lie much flatter and smoother yeah I, th I think this is a step a lot of people don't do so they end up with plaits with little sticky up bits everywhere and the hair doesn't quite all lie um perfectly evenly me i never thought about using wax no. <laughs> um so as you can see i've done this plait um i've plaited it uh, say what four fifths of the way down so I've got a tail left at the bottom we're not folding that up like you would do normally I'm going to take these for like little plaiting forceps um, or hemostats um, so for little clampy type things and I'm going to put that really close to her scalp and slide it through the bottom you need to make sure these are closed over otherwise they'll catch on the hair so I've got it poking out, open them, and then I'm just going to grab the hair around where the rubber band is and pull it up through. And you don't want to pull it too far through, otherwise it's going to kind of yeah. not leave you a little bud. Um, and then this next section, we'll be adding this tail into this plait. So I separate this into three sections. But I keep the middle one just slightly thinner than the left and right because I'm going to be adding hair into it. Get this mm. flat. Sometimes you might need to slide the band down just a little bit. And I'm adding this into the middle section and I tuck it underneath it like that. And then you just plait as normal and the plait will hold the tail of the previous plait into place. But you leave the rubber band on the end of it still? Yes, you do. If your horse had a very long mane, you could take it out. And by very long, I mean like double the length of Saren's. Um, but it just adds a wee bit more security. So you, I, you don't need to sew anything else in. Um, it's literally a band of plait for this style. Wow. So you need the hair nice and tight. Yeah. Um, the, the first one, I don't tend to do quite as tight because I don't want it to pull at their scalp because that would be quite uncomfortable for them. But the rest of it, I'm plaiting as tight as I can to keep the tension. And plait almost all the way down to the bottom. And then I'll just get my band and band off the end. And then you can just do some little adjustments. You might need to pull this through a tiny bit just to get the little buds at the top. And that's wow. the plait we've created there and added into the next plat. It's gorgeous.
So I'm going to create my next section. Um, actually, before I do my next part, um, a lot of people wonder how you start it. So the yeah. very first part, all you do is flat down as normal and then you fold it up and pull it through. And then you're left with a tail. So you're not adding any hair in from the forelock, for example. Um, it's just yeah. a straight up flat down to the end, like this one. And then pull it through the back and you've got the tail sticking out the back. And then the final plait, um, if you imagine this was the final plait at the, the top of our withers, I'd have this section folded up so it's neat. And then I'd simply fold it like a little rosebud and then sew it or band it into place. Yeah, so like, like you would in a normal place if you yeah. were doing them individually. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's just the start and finish, very straightforward. Um, so I'm going to prep this next little bit of our mane and then do another demo of it. Great. How long would it typically, if, if we weren't watching and we weren't bugging you with questions, how long would it normally take you just to do a mane like this? And Linda, do you go out and compete with her mane like this or is this special occasions? Uh, we do go out and compete. Uh, with it, like I do lots of different fancy plants on there and just for the fun of it and obviously it's a good opportunity to get nice photos at competitions. Um, it would take me uh, to do this one because it's quite intricate and I'm doing a lot more plants it's probably about 30 to 40 minutes to do this but if I was doing like kind of wider sections it would take less time. And what, what other forms of plaits do you do? I, I've just always been really boring and just done normal plaits. Um, so I've come up, this one's not a style that I invented, but I've come up with a couple other ones. So I've got spiral plaits, which you kind of French plait. So instead of plaiting downwards, you'd plait from here and French plait down into a curve. And then you'd basically curve the plait. Oh, wow. Like that. And then you'd sew it into place. Um, there's a tutorial of that on my Instagram, uh, no, YouTube channel, sorry. And uh, I did orchid plaits, which um, it's kind of a reverse of this one. So instead of pulling the hair up the back, you'd pull it round the front and then fold it and do a little um, sew at the bottom. Um, so they're all like BD and competition legal. Um, it's just a, a different way of doing it. I'm, I'm not sure if it'd go down particularly well in showing, but for the likes of uh, like dressage and show jumping, I think you can be a bit more uh, creative with it. Yeah, they're perfect. I've just got something running along the screen so people can see what your Facebook page is and your website. And you're really easy to find on YouTube. If you just go to YouTube and search for Baxter Equine Services, people will find you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything's there. And if anyone has any other questions, I do reply through Messenger and Instagram as well. Gonna pull this through again, down at our scalp. Catch the tail at the bottom and then pull it up through the middle. And these these forceps, actually, I've cheated. I've already ordered a pair. I just went on to um, Amazon and put forceps in and uh -huh. uh, came up with rather too many choices. Yeah, so these ones, um, they are, um, they're, they're marketed as like kind of horsey forelock forceps. Um, they, as long as they're not sharp, I think you can basically get any type. Um, do they lock at the end as well? Yeah, they do. Uh -huh. Yeah. You don't, I mean, I, I kind of lock them when I'm sliding it through the hair just to make sure the the ends isn't open. But you, yeah. you never need to lock it when you're actually using it, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Mm -hmm. Another... Um, product you can use if you're not a fan of wax is like hairspray. Um, plaiting sprays I generally don't find to be that grippy so I use the got to be powerful 
Um, it's like a human hairspray, and you can get it in like, boots and super chug and stuff. But it's <laughs> the grippiest hairspray in the world, and it sets the hair like nothing else. Um, and I find that and, really, really And does good. it just it's comb out at the end? Yeah, it does, it does. Uh -huh. um, and what, it's, it's great for... And what's in cool the it got to be powerful, so it's like got number two B. Um, it's in a big yeah. yellow can. People will recognise it the minute they go into the shop. They'll recognise it. Um, but I, I particularly like that one. So I'm just keeping this tight again, all the way down until I get to near the end. Will you be trying this on yours, Claire? Yeah, I will, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a um I've got a she's she's got a mane like Siren's. The other one is um the one with the rather unruly mane is part Percheron. And so it's oh. really thick and really bushy and she hates having it pulled. And I've oh. done running plaits on her because she looks quite Spanish. So I've done running plaits. Um, but I think doing something like this would be a real challenge. I'm so impressed at how still Siren's staying. Oh, Talk about a model bad. pupil. Uh -huh. No, she's uh, any attention. She's in her element. She's uh, when, when I'm doing her forelock plait, she normally ends up with her nose about an inch off the ground. She like she just goes so relaxed and safe. so. But this is why I use her all the time. I can faff about and she doesn't get annoyed at me. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, and was uh, it Linda, and when you took the photo that's in the calendar? Was Linda really lying on the ground? Yeah, uh -huh. she was literally lying on her side with a load of sweets, um, with me <laughs> shouting directions left a bit, right a bit. No, 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 do it again, do it again. We must have been there for what 10 minutes, Linda? Yeah, quite uh -huh. a, wee, a wee while. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and then as soon as I got it, it's like, that's it, we've got it, we've got it. It was worth it. Uh -huh. Linda's it was dead. worth it. It's beautiful. Uh, um, Linda's great. She does most of my filming for me. I end up kind of dragging her into li listening to me harp on about plants and stuff constantly. She'll be an well, expert. I should be an expert uh, with all the tutorials I've watched, but I'm not. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, that's because you have Nikki to do it for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very, I'm very lucky. I, I, I do understand that. Do you um what do you do if you get the little wispy bits? Is there any way would you just wax them in? Uh like little wispy bits. Yeah. Um so I'd get the the decent hairspray and try and flatten them down the best I could. Um right. I have a real bugbear when people try and chop off the wispy bits. Like it looks all right when it's still in the plat, but when you undo the mane and you end up with chunks going missing and stuff. So I always try and say to people, like, please avoid the scissors, like whenever possible. It's never a good idea. Yeah, and then because then the next time you go to plait, you've got even more wispy bits. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I, I get people asking me quite a lot about thin manes as well, like what plaits are good for thinner manes. Um, if your horse is like, they might just be like follically challenged or... Um, they've had their neck their mane rubbed out by necks um on their rugs um you can buy extensions and full plaits for them um there's quite a few different shops in the uk that make them if you just do a google um and uh you can use them to kind of fill in any gaps or thicken up a wee section um unfortunately there isn't a plait that can magically make your horse look like it's got a voluminous mane like you kind of need hair to work with um but that would mean you'd also do more smaller plaits with a thinner mane yeah you'd be more likely to do smaller plaits because a, a bigger plait would just look quite pathetic and lank i think um but yeah when i get people like Sarah's missing a little section here just from winter having rugs on all the time She's got a little gap, so I'll probably clip a little false plait just to fill that gap in. But I obviously can make a plait out of that. Like nice. for, there isn't anything to use. So you need to kind of get hair from somewhere. So going down the route of 
extensions or fake plaits. Like they're, they're ready made plaits that you literally just clip on. Um, that's kind clip, of what how do you mean? Do. Sorry, how do you mean clip on? Um, has it, if anyone's ever had like hair extensions in, like clip on hair extensions, it's the same little clip. Um, so you'd basically, um, if I was to use this little section, I'd try and neaten it up the best I could, probably stick a band in it so it's the hair is not all sticking up. And then I don't think I've even got any of the clips actually. Um, it's like it looks like a little comb um, that you pop it one way and it opens and you pop it the other way and it closes. So you'd literally just slide it in when it's open and pop it down and it'll hold this little boat. Uh, full plait into place. Yeah, know um, exactly what you mean. And what about the other way, in my case, where I've got a very bushy, thick mane, and my best just to try and find a type of plait that suits the horse? I don't know whether you... Can you compete in dressage with a running plait? Yeah, yeah, yes, you can. Um, a, a lot of uh, people up here have native ponies. One of our friends actually has a Highland, and she normally does a running plait on him, and she competes in British dressage. Um, so it's, t it's totally competition legal. Um, I think basically as long as you haven't got like tassels and ribbons and um, like fairy lights and stuff hanging off them, you can kind of plait their mane however you want. It doesn't have to be traditional. Um, and the traditional way doesn't work for all horses. Like you're saying, you've got a horse with a particularly thick and bushy mane. Um, it's not that nice to yank it out and you'll probably end up shortening it more than you actually want to or would work for you. Um, so you could say, like, right, I'm going to let it grow a little bit longer, but then I can do this style of plait or the simplified version where you you don't plait, you, you wouldn't have these little reverse scallops here. Um, or there's one of those on your there's one of your those on your YouTube. That's the one I saw you doing. I think it must have been with a Highland or similar. Yeah, uh -huh. You didn't but, do the in between. Yeah, so that, that was the, the Highlands. Um but that'll work on something with a, a main sort of seren's length, so about eight inches. Um but it, everyone kind of wants the the horse has to have this perfectly pulled mane so it looks smart when it's not plaited, but when it comes to actually plaiting it, it's like actually this is a bit of a nightmare and people find it difficult so you then need to go like oh well I keep it a bit longer and make plaiting it a lot easier um and you don't necessarily always need to pull a mane like if your horse is that thick a mane you could um you can actually part the mane down the middle from pole to weather so you've got mane on both sides and literally do plaits on both sides of the neck and that looks amazing um so, and it, it'd be much nicer for your horse not having, like if you've got a horse with double or triple thickness mane, but you want it down to Seren's um, thickness, it would be an absolute nightmare for for you to do. And I don't think the horse would be particularly happy about it. No, because I think a lot of the horses with coarser hair, they really don't like having their manes pulled. They're really no. sensitive to it. I've, I've seen that from Irish as well with really mm. quite bushy, strong manes. Yeah. I, I think a lot of horses, like I, I do a lot of um, like pulling and mane tiding and tail tiding and stuff. And there's a lot of horses that I've worked with that they've obviously had their manes pulled in the past from whatever yards they've been on and they hate it. They've obviously had chunks ripped out. So I end up having to find a different way to work around it. So there are different tools that you can use to tidy a mane. Um, I, I do still pull the odd horse, but it's generally um, only if they, they need it and if they're happy with me doing it. Um, but if, if they're not happy, then I'd much rather they had a, a nicer experience and um, just work around them. Yeah, I have to say the, the one that I'm going to try this on, she actually enjoys having her mane pulled. She mm. sort of goes into almost a trance-like state. Yeah. Oh, Very odd. There's some that I do, but like I, I think they must be itchy and they find it nice. But probably most horses uh, do object to it. Um, I, I find a lot of people don't um, like instead of just pulling like very small sections of hair, and I mean like little strands, like I don't know, a little cluster about that width. 
Yeah. They will literally like go back home it and then take a chunk out, which must feel horrific. Um, and a lot of people try and do it in one go instead of going like, right, we'll, we'll tidy your main up over a week um, and just do a little section by section. Yeah, which is much, much more sensible. Yeah. But, but I, I think like, it, if your horse is getting sedated for a bit, that's quite a good opportunity to to do if your horse is already sedated or um I, I hate to admit I did exactly that with my grey with the bushy mane. The yeah. vet was coming to take a um a tooth out and um so I did exactly that and he laughed and said you would not believe how many people do exactly that. Yeah, I the, the time it with the vet visit. Um, but if you need to do something like that, then um, it, it is a nicer experience for your horse because your horse is in happy land and doesn't know what's happening to it. So, so just the, these last couple of sections are slightly thinner just because of her wearing rugs during the winter so if I was to do this for a show I would probably put a couple of hair extensions in like probably the last kind of three parts mm -hmm. um, but no, that's, that's quite picky <laughs> <laughs> that's because you're a professional you do this as a living don't you Nikki yeah uh, I've got a clipping and grooming business that I started in 2017 um, I've been clipping since I was young. I started in Pony Club. Um, I'm self-taught, so I just kind of messed about and learned as I went along what worked and what didn't work. Probably the best way. Just to remind people that if you're watching this and you want to try it out, then um, take a photo, either email it to us at info at beta-uk.org or post in the comments to the recording when you're watching this later. Um, and we'll pick out 12 to be sent to calendar so you can have a picture and get the enjoyment of the rest of the year. And we'll also, the very best example, we will send you a beta goodie bag. That's brilliant. I can't wait to see them all. I, I love it when uh, a lot of my followers send me pictures of their horses at shows and when they've tried a plat out and when they've found a plat that works better for their horse so it's great to see like people having a bit more fun with it um but i think the horsey industry is very stuck on being traditional so it's nice to be like kind of going outside the box a wee bit and modernizing i think it's brilliant to see what's possible i'm one of those i've never would have thought of trying something like this um mm. It's really good to see just something different. And as you say, doing something that's going to suit the horse rather than being constrained by what you think you have to do. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's just more fun. You can see she's happy as Larry. She's yes. standing there with her ears pricked forward, half asleep, um, not moving a muscle. That is brilliant. And it's how is it warm up with you today? Yeah, it's a, a good like 15 degrees, so it's uh, like taps off weather, as we say in Scotland. <laughs> well, it's lovely out here in Yorkshire as well. Uh huh. It's a bit cool first thing, but beautiful sunny day now. Yeah, uh -huh. it's nice. Like, see, when you come out and you go, it's going to burn off by about 10 o'clock and you're going to have glorious sunshine. It's amazing. It is. That's brilliant. So, if you want to pretend this is your last plat, how would you then finish off? So, I would band about this far down anyway and then I'm going to fold the last section up so I'll do this slowly I, I'm quite fast when I do this so um, I've got the band here yep. and then I'm going to fold this in half and just catch it with my fingers and then I'm just going you can see I've got a little loop there I'm going to yep. put the band around it a couple of times so I've got the, the tail folded up um, I normally sew. I'm a, a big fan of sewing, but I'll show banding because I think most people will band. So I'm going to fold this in half. Oh, you've just woken up. Yeah. Fold it in half and then fold it in a third and a half again. And then, sorry, using my mouth to get the band off my finger. 
um, I'm just going to band it into place like that. Um, again, I think it looks much neater sewing it, but when you're riding, your hands are going to be hiding this, so you can just band it. So that's how I would finish it off. Brilliant. That looks stunning. Thank mm. you so much. Well, good luck, everybody. Um, I hope you have a go. Thank you very much, Nikki. Thank you, Linda. And most of all, perhaps, thank you, Siren. And let's have a look. Wow, that looks stunning. We model. And um, yeah. I'd like to recommend see these little, they're like kind of hairdresser plaiting belts. They are a game changer because you can put literally everything in them. And, and I used to have stuff hanging out my pocket in my hair, balanced on the horse, balanced on stables. But having it like on a belt is a lot easier. So it's a sound investment if you're going to be plaiting regularly. Um, yeah. You can find them most grown places or like if you search them online, it will come up with them. Yeah, and I, quite a, I've seen quite a few beta member retailers, both online and shop, are having more are now stocking a lot more plating products. So it's worth having a look as well at those. But that's brilliant. Thank you all very much. Um, good luck, everybody. Hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to have a look at Nikki's um, YouTube channel, and this will be available both on our Facebook and our Instagram feed. So have a great day, everyone, and thank you all. Thank you.